Jason Calacanis uh, joins us now for this conversation. Jason, I'm, I'm noticing that just over three weeks ago, July 24th, you said you deleted Twitter from your phone, but I see a lot of tweets since then. Does that speak to this kind of love-hate relationship that users seem to be having as, as Twitter seeks to, to clean up its platform? Yeah, Twitter is uh, a rage slot machine, and it's highly addictive. We see many people from the president to Elon to journalists taking breaks from it or embracing it too much. And it, it is highly addictive, obviously. I deleted it off my phone. I use it on my desktop from time to time. And obviously, when I get off air after being on CNBC, I have about 50 Tesla troll accounts uh, attacking me every time that I have to deal with. So it's quite toxic. It's a little bit ridiculous for Jack to be out there saying that they're going to be able to police any kind of speech on Twitter. You, you, you can only react to what people have said, and the idea of policing billions of tweets is going to be impossible. The entire magic of Twitter is that anybody can mix it up with anybody. If the president posts something, I can reply and put my message right underneath his. And if I want to call the president an idiot and he wants to call Omarosa a dog, that is why Twitter exists, is for that kind of full contact debate. Now, Jack is, doesn't really use his own service all that much. He's a quiet guy. He's not out there mixing it up. And he wants to pretend that they're going to make it a civil place. Twitter is not designed to be civil. It's designed for people to be able to mix it up and everybody to be on an equal platform. If they try to reverse engineer Twitter into being like Facebook, where you can't just put yourself on somebody else's wall. You can't go onto a journalist or a celebrity's or an author's page and challenge them. Well, that kills the whole reason for Twitter to exist. But Twitter is a non-growth company, right? They're, they're making $2 billion a year. They haven't grown. They had 300 million users in 2015. They have 330 now. The service reached its natural audience, and they made a critical error where they're trying to figure out how to make it grow again. They shouldn't try to figure well, out how to make it grow because it won't. Jason, it's a I mean, the inverse audience. of that argument, the inverse of that argument is that there are people who, or, who otherwise would be on the service, find it too uh, uncivil, and with more yeah. protections would on board. You don't think that's possible? Well, you could do that, and then you lose the magic of Twitter, which is I can go under Carl Cantania's amazing tweets and challenge him, right? And so now and, it just as you to often look like do. Facebook. <laughs> which I often do, and that's the idea. So what Twitter could have done to make a meaningful business, and they totally screwed up, was buying smaller companies and using this 300 million uh, strong, fervent, opinionated influencer uh, social network to build those other services. Vine and Periscope were amazing assets that they totally destroyed. And what's the point of being public if you can't acquire companies and use that stock to then build other brands and build your service. So Twitter's lost. It's not a stock you should own. Um, and Jack is not probably the right guy to own it. The ad network doesn't work. The ad network just pales in comparison to Facebook and Google. So I would say this is like a, a prisoner's dilemma. If they want to make these kind of changes, it's going to remove the entire fabric of what Twitter's supposed to be. There is one thing they could do maybe to, to stop some of this, which is get rid of anonymous accounts. If they got rid of anonymous yeah. accounts, that would change the whole nature. Because anybody who's opinionated or a woman or an African-American woman on Twitter, they will receive so much harassment from anonymous accounts. It is insane. And I don't know why they don't do that beyond the fact that it would tank the stock. And whenever they take the medicine and get yeah. rid of bot accounts, the stock tanks, which shows you well, how dysfunctional yeah. long-term thinking is in a public stock. Speaking of Twitter users, let's talk Tesla, yeah. uh, the company reportedly yeah. being hit with a subpoena from the SEC over CEO Elon Musk's tweets. Uh, you're a big fan, and this is where you get to have those 50 Twitter troll accounts uh, that, that you've been <laughs> sure. looking forward to, Jason, uh, and come after you. Uh, so what, what Elon Musk did, potentially serious, because it moved the stock, but then at the same time people are saying, uh, even at the worst, uh, the, the crackdown from the SEC is going to be a slap on the wrist. What's your take on the significance of this, and should maybe Elon Musk take a lead from you and delete Twitter from his phone? Yeah, Elon should get off Twitter for sure. It's a distraction, and um, you know, intelligent people like to debate, so they're suckered into these crazy debates with trolls, and even intelligent people, so he should get off Twitter 100%. 
In terms of his tweet, I like the way he phrased the tweet. M considering taking uh, Tesla private. He's letting everybody know at the same time. Now, if he had done this in the background and started hiring bankers and letting them know that he's considering this, well, those people would have an information advantage over everybody else. So I like the idea what of everybody the gets the information at once. Part? Considering I think was, that's was accurate subtle, as well. was not. I think that's accurate as well. The, Sau the Saudis were building up this 3, 4, 5 percent position. They offered multiple times to invest in the company and help them take it private. And as we all know, Tesla had a long dance with Google. Apple made overtures. There are two or three dozen sovereign wealth funds and companies both here and in China who could easily write five, ten, twenty billion dollar checks to take the company private. So I think the funding secured is accurate. I mean, if the Saudis are offering it, then it's accurate. Uh, and he's considering it. He framed it perfectly. And I think it's all these Tesla shorts who are trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. When you look at the facts about Tesla, the Wall Street Journal said the Model 3 is a thrilling modern marvel. They went from producing 2,000 cars every two or three years with the Roadster to doing 5,000 a week. People can't shut up about how much they love the car. And the uh, Monroe Associates folks who are, yeah. you know, rip these cars apart piece by piece, say it's got a 30% margin and they're wildly impressed by it. The facts show that this, com this company and the Saudis interested in it and Apple's interested in it and Google's interested in owning yeah. it. That shows that this is a company for the ages. Now, Jason. there might be some balance issues on the margin, but these yeah. shorts are 100% wrong and they're toast. Well, short and Period. short sellers aside, Jason, when you have reports that the SEC is, uh, you know, putting subpoenas out there, you have investor lawsuits, and you actually, short sellers aside, have a company that's been able to basically tap unlimited funding from the public markets, does it make sense for Tesla to go private? Will it go private? You know, I, 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 I'm going to put my odds on it going private since when Elon is a very competitive and driven person, we're personally friends, I don't trade the stock, uh, but I've known Elon before, since before Tesla. This is not the type of executive you want to give extra motivation to. And when all those shorts start uh, making his life hell and spreading fear, uncertainty, and doubt constantly, um, it motivates an executive like Elon Musk to then overperform and sleep on the factory floor and hit the numbers they need to hit. So you've basically taken a person who doesn't need motivation and you've given, given them extraordinary motivation. It is a horrible, horrible way to work a short position. It would be like telling LeBron James he's going to lose and he's horrible. Like he's going to come out and score 50 points. That's exactly what Elon Musk is doing. He's coming out here and he's dunking on everybody. I would like to see Elon take SpaceX, boring company, and Tesla and put it into Elon Inc., take it private, and then once a year or every six months, allow people uh, to trade the shares. And that would a be a much LeBron better way James to build there. the future. That's, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm giving him a little Jason. bit of credit. A little bit of credit. He's a great that's, uh, individual. Nice. He's a great individual player. Not a team player, but a great individual <laughs> player. Uh, next time, we, I'm not going to ask you to draw any, you know, parallels in, in that at all. Uh, next time we have you, try to bring some strong opinions. I don't know. So I will. Unique, I will. Such a wallflower. <laughs> I'll see the shorts on Jason Twitter. Jason Yes, you will. <laughs> Thanks for joining us.